Congratulations on your number one album. Oh, Write thank it you on very your much skin. indeed. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> how long and well, it's taken a long while. How different has it been to write this compared to the others? Because you had so long to write it. Did it give you time to think actually I'm going to change that? Properly? It did. No, it did move around a lot because I was. I mean, if I'd known it was going to be three years, I would have gone to Fiji for a week at some point. Um, but instead, I worked solidly the whole time because I was trying to release something last year which I couldn't for just a number of kind of labelly reasons. Like we, I mean, this album's had three, three different managing directors of the whole label, so it's been, yeah, it's been pretty mental. So I, when I was trying to do something last year, I had one, I had like another album <laughs> ready to go. And then this time around, as soon as I found out it was being moved backwards, kind of gave me a chance to step away from what I'd been doing, have a proper look at it and take the best bits and then also try and Im improve on it. Mm. And I'm I'm really pleased with with how it landed. I mean, it was a, it has been a it's been a battle. Like we had to. It was really weird because on one side it was so much more casual and so much like the whole kind of writing process was so much so much more kind of at ease with itself and not, even like recording was actually really chilled. But then in terms of kind of yeah, the, the kind of worky side was actually more intense. I'd say than ever before, just because we had to. I, I think it's partly having a, having a child, actually, I think, has oh, made me... Say, has that changed your style of writing? Has it made you think differently when you write the music? It's kind of just accented it in some ways. Like, it hasn't changed kind of completely, but I think I've always had... I've always been aware of kind of the responsibilities of what I'm, what I'm doing, because I do... I take it quite seriously. Even just, like, kind of Twitter and Facebook, I'm very aware of what I'm putting out, because I kind of think whatever you put out will come back and definitely in terms of content of songs as well I'm really I'm really quite quite careful I do take it I take it really seriously because yeah I don't want to a I don't want to kind of waste the opportunity that I've got in terms of having like a positive impact on people's on people's lives so I think having having a child has made that even stronger than it was before because it's not just for me anymore, and it kind of it's it's made the songs seem like they go they last they last so much longer than than ever before. So I'm kind of even more yeah I take that side of it even more seriously. I was going to say you, you do take your Facebook very seriously and social media to you is very important. You really engage your fans. Yeah, you I think. The, uh, write it on your skin video, yeah. which I nearly submitted to. Oh. I missed the date. <laughs> But um, how many photos did you get submitted for that? Oh, yeah, a lot. There was a lot of photos I for that. I thought you were actually going to release that video as the actual video. Oh, we should, probably should have done. I liked it. Yeah. No, we should, we should do. We need to get more stuff kind of out and about. Yeah. And also, I liked the advent calendar style build oh, up that, to the release where you was like laying on the floor. That got and really stressful. There were days where it, would get, it was like getting late and I was still like at an airport oh, trying yeah. to find something to make a three out of. It's like, I need to make a, th I need to make a three. It's, it's like three o'clock now. It was, yeah, it was put a lot of pressure on. That was really good. I enjoyed that. And, um, well, I don't know, the worst one though was the four that I put up backwards. Oh, yeah. That was, that was a proper dyslexic moment for me. And um, behind the bars, when you wrote that, did you sort of realise at the time that when it came out, you're going to have like, the Olympics and the Jubilee and 2012 and when you hear that song it's quite rousing it builds up mm. and then it talks about gold and I thought oh that's good we can hear that when anyone wins a gold medal yeah well originally I wrote it about a kind of it was actually a, a wild west robbery bizarre that's where the kind of gold line came from it's about this really weird tale that I kind of wrote I just, it took me quite a while actually. I just sat there one night and spent a long time and I kind of pieced it together and then all the melodies were really good um, and I was actually, my, my brother, my brother got a cab um, to my house from his and his taxi driver said, are oh, you writing a song for the Olympics? You should, you should like, there's a lot of money in it. And my brother was like, actually that's a really good idea. <laughs> um, and he kind of came and I was playing him new stuff and he was like, oh, I still know what we should do with this. And it was quite, it was a very easy kind of, it, we only had to change like a couple of lines for it to kind of become more applicable. So it was definitely kind of half in there. Yeah. And then in terms of the kind of recording and the production, we were, we did start doing it while watching slow motion stuff and trying to, 
It was really weird. I hadn't really done that before. I did that with a few things. Kind of just putting on the kind of visuals that you think should go with where it should end up. And then when you're doing it, it kind of yeah. automatically kind of drifts in that direction. <laughs> so um, you're at Wickerman this week, aren't I you? am, yeah. Are you taking the family? Not to that one because I go straight from there to the Secret Garden Party oh. and that is not suitable for children. What in fact, that is probably the most unsuitable for children place in the universe. What are you going to do? Last time I saw you, you was at Harvest and you was trying strings behind you. Are you going to have strings again or are you just um, going to solo? I think I'm just completely solo for the moment. I might, st I might love to see strings again at some point, even on a slightly bigger scale. But I think slightly further down the line. Any dancing UFOs? Aliens on there? Depends who's kicking around. I always just, because it's always like, it's in the back of the van. And it's kind of, if we can find someone stupid enough to get in it, then I'm going to take advantage of that. <laughs> I know. She, was, she so enjoyed that last time when she was on stage. Oh, she had an amazing, yeah. no, we've, had, we've had loads of people do it. It used to be like the, the lighting, lighting guy used to do it. Lighting assistant. That was hilarious. Um, when you uh, set out with this album, you kind of trialled it out, you said on Facebook, have a competition, mm. go to a small farm, small audience. Mm. How could you gauge from that how big this was going to get to Queen? Well, you couldn't at all. Yeah. Like, you can't, you just don't. You kind of just play stuff to people and if people like it, you're like, yes, people like it. I mean, it's weird, there's, there's kind of two ways of looking at it. Obviously, there's maintaining the fan base that you've got, which is you've massively important. And they're, they're really good to me as well, they're, they're amazing. So there's those guys, and then it's also expanding off it, but also without putting off the people that were in from the start. And it's a really tricky balance, and you can't please everyone all the time. There's bound, like I remember there was, God, there was some weird comments about the EP saying that it sounded like demos. Even though it did say that it was demos, mm. but people were really annoyed that it was demos. And I was like, what? It was a really strange one. No, it's hard to keep it up. But um, yeah, the, the response to the album's been pretty much relentlessly really good. It's been amazing. And how about the tour in October? What can we kind of expect from that? Some of the albums, some of the next Yeah, I'll oh, definitely. We'll do. I'm going to try and get bits from all from all three. I mean, it's, it's really nice for me to see people talking about the second one because when that came out, that was kind of the height of kind of. It was really, it was really urban and really mega pop. And it was like kind of, kind of like the main thing coming out of the UK was either kind of grime, or or kind of proper proper squeaky pop. So when I released the second one, it didn't really it didn't get radio in the same way the first one did because it was kind of in a different like everything was in a different kind of rotation to the way it is even kind of right now. So it's really nice to hear people kind of listening to that again as well. And the other thing I just want to know. When you first set out and you had that accident when you'd gone skiing and come back and broke your hand, oh, yeah. how did you find out about that treatment that you had instead of having the plaster cast that could have... Oh, that was, that was actually the, the type of plate that was put in was different. And it and hasn't so affected you at all? No, not particularly. It's quite no, it's so. still absolutely fine. All right. Okay, well, thank you very much. I think Pleasure. we've run well over time. Thank you for your time <laughs> and congratulations. It's right. a wonderful album. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Cool.